Late folks, how y'all doing? Welcome back to an old man, I'll tell you what. That, that's a nice color, I really like that color. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're, gonna be doing, we're gonna be doing some uh, cast iron seared steaks tonight, uh, reverse seared, using the kettle aspect of this grill. Now, the Kamado Joe Kettle Joe, and this is what this is, one of the first videos I, I did was, is it a Kamado or a kettle? And uh, what we're doing today is, yesterday we kind of proved that it's kind of like a Kamado, because we did low and slow for, um, six and a half hours at uh, 250 and it, it did a very nice job of that today we're going to remove the slow roller insert out of there and we're going to use the hinged to take the kettle down and use just the kettle portion of it but we're also going to play around with using a slow and sear now all you Kamado Joe people please don't get upset with me uh, a lot of people have been asking because this is a 22 inch and I'm thinking about getting it Will my slow and sear attachments fit in this grill? So we kind of answered that already in the questions asked, questions answered, but we have yet to put it to test. And that's what we're gonna do today. So let's uh, let's go through the configuration. And I'll tell you what, maybe someone can answer. I got a question on this thing right here. I got a lot of water in there after the first cook and I took it apart. So we'll take a look at that. You come out of Joe experts out there, if you can help me out and answer that question for me, that'd be awesome. But we'll get it configured and give you a look-see. All right, here's one for all you Kamado Joe experts out there. Uh, first cook yesterday, I had a lot of smoke coming out of the uh, temp probe. And at one point it was a little little loose, so I put my gloves on and I just tightened it up from the backside. There's just a wing nut back there, but it was still leaking. So I said, well, I ain't gonna do nothing now. I'll look at it tomorrow. So today I pulled it off and I already did and cleaned things up and there's, a, there's another hole. <laughs> What's that hole for? And it kind of lines up with this hole in the back of the Kamado Joe temp probe. But, I, I you know, I always was under the impression that that gives the temp, not this. So what's that for? Because all I was doing was letting moisture, blown moisture into it. And you can see there's a ton of moisture in there. And even though there looks like a weep there, nothing's really coming out. So uh, unless someone can tell me what that's really for, I'm probably gonna take a stainless steel uh, uh, sheet metal screw about the same exact size and cut it off real nice and, you know, Fit it in there from the back side in, so just uh, and then uh, that'll be covered up by this. But I, if someone can tell me the reason for that hole and why it should stay there, let me know. Thanks. All right, so here's our setup, please. I, I know, but it, it, it fits in there really nice. So I've got the charcoal basket that comes with the kettle Joe still in there, and uh, the slow and sear fits right on top of it. And you're saying, well, is it flimsy? Is it going to fall over, or what, what's it going to do there, Tom? Let's get some gloves on. And no, no, it ain't, it ain't going nowhere. So that, that's a nice fit right in there. And, and my thought is to, uh, and I've got some lump left over from yesterday. I'm going to put some uh, b, b on top of that. And you could either take, and this would be the low side over here. And you can either take this down one notch here and go, and mind my shoulder there. Oh, come on. It's, it's easier than I make it look. And put it down there. And then... Uh, Take my steak up to maybe 105, no more than that. Pull it off, open everything up, and then uh, put this, put that grate on, and I could sear right on top of that. Or, or I could take the cast iron slow and sear, and uh, I just got to keep it out a little ways because of these handles are pretty big for the lid, and uh, just like that. And you know, and in all reality, you don't have to really wor worry about the lid because you're gonna be searing these probably with the lid open, I would imagine. So that's the setup. I think it's gonna work. And uh, that's the great thing about having one of these is that, uh, you know, it is extremely versatile and can do just about, you know, look at this, we're using the slow and sear on the Kettle Joe, and I'm sure the Kamado Joe people have no intention of uh, wanting the slow and sear using their product. Uh, but uh, we're gonna try and see if it works. All right, fire has started in the slow and sear. Let's go take a look at those steaks. All right, let's take a look at our steaks. Smoke, smoke is obviously rolling. Using the slow and sear, eh, smoke's still coming out of there because um, of that extra hole. And you know, we'll just, just take a quick look here. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice smoke. We've got our chuck steaks on there. And uh, we're just gonna Close this back up and go, like I said, about 105 degrees is what I'm going to do. And I kind of got a feeling I'm going to look at it in about 20 minutes and see what they're doing. And then we'll pull them off, open everything up and get that nice and hot and uh, cast iron serum. 
Oh man, I'll tell you what, I'm getting hungry. All right, let's take a look. See, it says we're 300 degrees. Holy smokes, that's warm. And uh, you can see we've got, oh man, what is that? We've got some garlic butter on there and we're gonna take a couple quick temps here and uh, see how we're doing. Here I got uh, this Thermal Pro that I use occasionally. Well, hell, you gotta turn the damn thing on, Tom. There we go, sorry. It says we're, uh, yeah, 57. And 55, so we'll keep going here. Some more smoke on there. Smoke is a rolling, looking pretty good. And uh, we'll give you a look-see once we're ready to see her. All right, folks, I know we gotta be almost there. Looking for about 100, oh man, look at the smoke. Using the Thermal Pro. Yeah, we're just about there. We're 100 back here. So we're gonna pull these off and uh, we're gonna put that cast iron on. You can see those, <laughs> that grill was getting nice and hot already. And then uh, we'll sear these on the cast iron, give you a look. All right, five minutes later, got the slow and sear cast iron dripping griddle on there. You can see where it's hot. Let's go where it's not. And uh, we go where it is. It's, oh man, it's over 785 degrees there. So we're gonna let it even out a little bit more because that's the great thing about cast iron. It'll even out. We'll let that do that for maybe another five minutes and then we'll uh, get the steaks going on. Oh, man. All right, we got the butter on there and we got the steaks on there and oh man, it is hot. So we're gonna just give it a quick sear. Put that down, give it a look, see in about a minute. Stay All right, for those of you who think the slow sear is a bad idea for the Kamado Joe Kettle Grill, Model, come on, Joe Kettle Joe. It's uh, <laughs> look at that. Oh man, that is some nice cast iron looking steaks right there, butter infused. Oh man, we'll keep on going. This is gonna be delicious. All right, folks, let's, let's beef things up here. <laughs> um, oh man, I'll tell you what, let's uh, let's go on this one over here. Seared them on that cast iron. Low and slow. Reverse sear. Using the, uh, huh. oh man. Nice. That's, that's rare all day long. Hmm. On the slow and sear. <clears throat> Folks, sorry. Hope you enjoyed this. Tom Horseman on YouTube, please subscribe. And as always, folks, appreciate you watching. Thank you.